Hi, Chen Tobago. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACTN. It's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9 where we bring something relevant in sport to you. Uh, big shout out to all the viewers of Scoreboard. I know that you're locked on, so I hope that this interview you're going to enjoy it very much. Um, tonight we're going to be talking cycling. As you know, the trainer, uh, the Tobago, actually, the Tobago International Cycle Classic 2017 is here. Uh, it's going to be starting on Wednesday coming and um, I have two of the cyclists who will be taking part in that major event and also the ma media laser officer who will give us a brief um, description um, and highlight what is going to be happening over the next uh, couple of days. First of all, let me introduce you to Clayton Clark, the media officer for this year event. Clayton, it's a pleasure. Welcome to ACTN. Thank you. And um, we have the brother and sister combination, Trail and Tobago um, international cyclists, uh, Keel Campbell and Tinil Campbell. Yeah. Uh, Hi. Welcome, it's a Morning, pleasure. Um, before we get into the, the cyclist, uh, cycling aspect, let me talk to Clayton quickly. 31 years, this event has been going on and it has grown from then to now. I think that you were there for the last six years or so or seven years. Um, tell us a bit about the inception of the event and what can we expect for 2017? All right, the Tobago International Cycle Classic started by the Abrahams family. That's Emil's father and the family. Uh, Emil is from Tobago. Mm -hmm. Well, he's a, so far our, I don't want to say lone cyclist. We have, we have had others that came after him, but he's the one. But more recognized. Um, yes, yeah. and the race was started to provide competition for him. Mm -hmm. And it has grown then to what it is now. It is now a four-stage international event. Uh, you have the UCI Tour, which is on the last day. Uh, it's, uh, it's races within the Classic. You have the four-stage race, which starts on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Then you mm -hmm. have the mountain bike series, two, two, two races on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then you have the UCI Tour of Tobago, UCI Sanction, that's the international cycling body mm -hmm. they have sanctioned the event and you can earn points for towards your world ranking mm. so it starts on wednesday with the first stage at um can be the can be orkinskill circuit is a relatively flat course and then on thursday the action shifts to mount tilving it's a more hilly mm -hmm. little f more it's very undulating flat hilly very challenging course and um that's thursday morning the first race Wednesday is Wednesday afternoon and the Thursday morning and then Friday it's the Plymouth Criterion laps around the Plymouth, uh, the streets in Plymouth and Plymouth is very, it's very different. It's really like a truck because the, the streets are like a grid yeah, yeah. and you can stay in your gallery or porch and watch your race. And also then the final leg is on Saturday at the Scarborough Market, the Wilson Road Criterion. Again, a lot of laps pass swift, a lot of spill sometimes. And <coughs> then on Sunday, you have the UCI Tour of Tobago, starting at the Scarborough Esplanade and take, taking the cyclists around the coast of Tobago. Starts around 7.30 and about five hours after the first uh, rider is supposed to be making his way in. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the defending champion in the fourth stage, that's Arno van der Zwart. He is back, he's coming in later today. Mm -hmm. Emil Abraham is making a return. He retired, so we thought, 2015 from national duties, but he has been doing well in the Masters division in Atlanta where he's based. And he's coming with a team, Team Pharmaco, and we're going to get into the teams when we speak to Akila and Tenil in a little while. Mm. And this year's event, uh, the have some challenges, of course, but mm. the organizers are really heartened at the perseverance of the stakeholders. You had an issue with getting the live stream and the persons who usually assist have say, listen, we have to make it happen. So we're having live, live stream on, on Thursday and Friday. That's the Plymouth leg and the Scarborough leg. Live stream events that TT, that's the, the link, stream events that TT. And um, so I mentioned the format. Also in terms of the division, Yes, we have international riders from Argentina, Germany, Denmark, mm -hmm. Switzerland. But it's not just all about the top elite and, of course, Colombia, Dominican Republic, Cuba. 
and we also have its different divisions that those riders ride in the division one then you have the division two and then you have division three which is more for the casual riders now they they each division the races are shorter so they don't ride the full laps as the elite athletes and mm -hmm. there's a prize after each stage you there's a winner and then there's the yellow jersey like the tour de france mm -hmm. and at the end of the fourth stage there's an overall winner there's a prize for the top caribbean top under 23 and there's the sprints there's a lots of laps and then you get you gain prize points for each sprint lap and it's staggered i think it's every five every ten laps and so there's a sprint king at the end of the stage race as well so there's a lots of races there's the, the carrying is supposed to be on they're waiting word on that usually the teams come in with sponsors so that is still to be finalized our registration closes on Saturday on Wednesday morning, so teams can still register. So far, we have ten professional teams. We're gonna get into that in a little while. Um, we have uh, by the UCI tour. Um, I mentioned the streaming. We have two international commentators, Trevor Connors and Audrey Lemore. Mm. Which I'm sure I'm pronouncing it properly. French. They're Canadian. Mm -hmm. They're former professional riders. They are now commentators. And they have more or less volunteered to come to assist in the commentary. I know, I, I know that this year, for the first time, ESPN will not be... Right. Um, that's, that's, that's one of the, the setbacks, the setbacks yes. that you all had this year. As it's no, it is no secret economic challenges all around, and the Cycling Classic has been affected. Two of our major stakeholders, we, we, we call them stakeholders, they're not just sponsors. Because of the nature of this event, this is a sports tourism event, two of our major stakeholders have not come forth this year, and hence the organizers were not able to bring in ESPN. So that's, that, that's a big um, opportunity to market the, the island. And ESPN has been cutting their coverage of the Caribbean and the Tobago Cycle Classic, as well as the CPL Cricket. Yeah. yeah. Are the two major events which they are still on their calendar. Mm. But they have given assurances that they're going to be here in next 2018. year. Yeah, yes, that, once, yeah. once the funding is available. And because of the funding, we almost didn't have the live stream, but Mr. Jeff Charles, the, the, the chairman, they have been able to work it out. We are having the live stream, and I just gave you the link stream events, the TT. Some of the prize money had to be adjusted downward, maybe mm -hmm. kind, because of the drop in, in funding. But we also must commend our regular sponsors, NLCB, the Tobago House of Assembly, they have come forth and uh, Caribbean Butlers, B Mobile, Econo Car Rentals, British Airways, Crown Point, Beach Hotel, and Johnson's Apartment. This is like the Games Village. Mm. Uh, Car Caribbean Airlines, Kiss Br Baking, Holiday Snacks, Agostini Insurance, El Pecos. And we want to specially commend or specially recognize the Tobago Support Team. Uh, TEMA, that's the Tobago Emergency Management Agency. Tobago Regional Health Authority, where we have doctors and nurses on standby to deal specifically with injuries or, mm. you know, um, events or associated with the events, associated with the classic, sorry. Tobago React, they provide all the communications for this classic. The Tobago Police Service, we have been working with them and they're coming on board and fully understanding their role and how important it is to have the roads secured and cleared. We have had some challenges in the past, but we are working on getting the police fully on board with that support. The Tobago mm. the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities, ensuring that all the roads are paved and marked off. They have been working well with us in ensuring that that is done. Tobago Information Technology, uh, Tobago Red Cross, Michael Baker, Desron Clark, and he's a local cyclist, but it really involved in pushing this event in Tobago. Michael Baker has been one of the founders of this event way back in 1986. And Radio Tambrin, they have been fully supporting this event. So those are our sponsors and our supporters. And uh, George and the listeners, you know, we, we take a lot for granted in our country. And uh, I've been around the Tobago Cycle Classic just a few years. And I am amazed when I hear the tourists or the visitors talk about the experience. They say when they go to races, and uh, it's just from the hotel to the track. And I remember going to the Caribbean Championships in Barbados, and it's basically that you jump on a bus, you go to a ride, you come back. Even the bikes, you have to put the bikes on a, a truck. Tobago is different. Everything is closed. You actually walk from the hotel 
from the airport to the hotel, Torbay is, mm. is two steps away. So they see this more of just a cycling. It's more of a holiday. They enjoy it, not just focus on riding. Then we have the beach lime. And let me tell you, you should be there with that. It is as competitive. We, have, we teach them how to wine. They get crab and dumpling. Emily leaves the, con the limbo, and they really, really have a good time. And mm. it, these memories stick with them because, as, as I mentioned, they go to different races, is jump on a bus, hotel, ride, because you want it, have to be focused. But here it's totally different. And as I said, I think we take it for granted. Now, coming to the competition, we have 10 teams competing so far, and the organizers are saying this is one of the most competitive lineup in terms of the teams. All over the, with the um, budget cuts. Yes. Well, meant to mention that um, earlier in the week, we had some teams pulling out because of the effects of hurric three hurricanes. Yeah, so I saw that, yeah. Right, so Dominican Republic, their full team is not coming, but some of the riders are not based there, so they may still come. Well, St. Martin, of course, we not coming. They were affected. Uh, Guadeloupe and Martinique, they sent teams from time to time. They had to pull out, even before Maria hit. So that's a setback we have been having, but as I mentioned, with the 10 teams, the organizers are saying that each team has a quality rider that can win the race, and a um, Team Pharmaco, that's with Emil Abraham. We have PSL with the defending champion, first and second place from last year, Nick Stoppler and um, Arno van der Watt, and then we have Marlo Rodman from Jamaica, so that's a very strong lineup. Jet Blue. Marlon Rodman still from Jamaica, he's from Trinidad. Well, he, yes, yes. <laughs> because he has been living... Um, well, he's racing here. Yeah, for quite yes, a while yes, now. Yes. He, he's not going to be racing here this weekend. He, he has a race in Jamaica, and then he's going to fly mm, straight right. to Tobago. Okay. Well, let me, um, let me quickly... I'll come back to you, please. Let me quickly go across to Akil. Uh, Akil, um, you know, long ask you to come on my show, right? <laughs> You're finally rich, eh? Time, time, time. Right. You have been abroad for some time in training, right? Let, yeah. let's, let's talk about the, the stint abroad. Um... It was, um, um, I could say that um, I went to the States earlier this year more so before Carnival. Mm -hmm. um, Gary from the, wherever it's called, don't, wherever, wherever I want to call it. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I was getting ready for um, Pan Am Championship Road. So I was under email for probably a week or two mm -hmm. before I went to um, Pan Am Championships. Um, trained with him, raced with his team um, for a week and a half um, in um, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Speed Week. It's one of the, I would say, renowned set of races that have in the States. Um, mm -hmm. Did pretty okay. Um, went to the Caribbean Championships, um, the Pan Am Championships. Um, didn't do as I expected to do, I had um, a little bit of bike problems, mm -hmm. um, finished 19th. Um, and that pretty much was it for the, um, for the earlier part of the year. I came back to Trinidad for a little bit to, to do um, the Easter Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. Left after the Easter Grand Prix, went to Pennsylvania to do some UCI races to get ready for, for nationals. Mm -hmm. um, Pennsylvania didn't go so well. Um, I got a couple of UCI points, um, came back home for nationals. Um, we had, we won the team pursuit. Um, I won the Omnium and the point chase. And mm. yeah, that's where you are, are seated, um, to the 18th in, 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 in the world right now. You are the top trainer, then. Yeah, um, the top trainer, and from, yeah. as we speak. Um, mm. So after nationals, it was just, we basically had two or three weeks to get ready for Pan Am Championships. Mm. Um, most of our, um, most of my time and other guys' time um, were into the team pursuit. Um, we finished fifth, um, which was an excellent um, feat for, for Trinidad and Tobago. Um, broke the national record by nine seconds. Mm. And basically, that, that was it. Um, we're here right now. This is not the first year that you'll be taking part in the Tobago Classic, right? This year would be the third year. The third year. What was that experience like for you, looking back now at the last two years? Um, the first year I rode for, for PSL, mm. and we won. Um, I think we won everything that year. Mm. Um, um, it was, riding for PSL the first year, 
that I actually went to Tobago was um, was great. Um, mm. The guys were all. We moved that one unit. Um, Nick Stoppler, um, he he's just um, amazing when it comes to team tactics, team everything, team mm. anything. Nick Stoppler is, is the guy that that um, that they should be um, thing. Um, what what are you looking forward to for this 2017? 20 Tobago. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure as yet. Um, when we get to Tobago, um, after the first day, we would know where we stand as a team mm -hmm. to, to know actually what okay. we are going to do for the SRI tour. You took part in the Elite Pan Am Championships at the Coover venue recently. Yeah. Um, how successful that you, you, would you rate that, that um, your performance? Uh, my performance um, wasn't wasn't that wasn't that great, but um, I find I had it okay. All right. I know we have to take a break. Um, I wanted to throw it over to Tinil, but when we come back, um, we will talk a bit about your experience um, in the Tobago Classic and what the year has been so far for you. Okay. Viewers, you are viewing scoreboard here on ACTN. We are talking to Tinil and Akil Campbell and uh, Clayton Clark, we are discussing the 2017 edition of the, Trent International, the Tobago International Cycle Classic. We'll be right back after the short break. Hi, my name is Jusane Phillip from Rig Tech Sonics, and I'll be taking part in the Tobago International Cycling Classic. Hi, my name is Joven Gomez and I'll see you for the Tobago Cycling Classic 2017. Welcome back to Scoreboard here on ACT. Today before the break, um, I throw a question to you. Um, is this your first year at the Tobago event? This would be my first year on the PSL. On the I participated in the Tobago Classic in 2015 with DPS. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. This will really be my second year. What was that experience like for you? What, uh, what, the first year I rode in Division 2 mm -hmm. with the guys. Mm -hmm. and It was a good experience. Um, it was a bit challenging. I crashed in the first stage. Uh, and the second stage was pretty hard. Mm -hmm. That's with the hills and stuff. Mm -hmm. And third and fourth stage, I tried to help Tyler to get the yellow jersey, which I think he ended up achieving that. Mm -hmm. So it was a good experience and I look forward to riding with PSL this year. What has been the, the how has been the year so far for you in um, for, for, for in, in this year's um, events because I saw you at the recent um, Elite Panama um, this year, championships. It was I could say I am not so satisfied since I wasn't able mm -hmm. and as lucky as my brother to go abroad to international competition because I attend university, mm -hmm. at a school at the University of Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was pre a lot preoccupied with school. So mm -hmm. most of my events was local. And the only international event that I really went abroad to do was the Pan American Road Championships and well, the Pan American Elite Tram Championship mm -hmm. championship that was held in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. you, you have recently um made the national team, right? Yeah. Um, people who have seen you, seen you ride before, you know, you are relatively new in cycling, right? Yeah, you could say so. What, what, what's the experience like for you from where you started to where you are presently? Well, it was a really great 
experience and as the year goes by I see myself continuing to grow and grow as an individual and a cyclist. Mm -hmm. um, my coach Elijah Green has been there with me since my return mm -hmm. and he as well keeps seeing the progress in me and we're just trying to get a foundation and continue training and trying to get the results so we could get a pro contract abroad mm -hmm. to race and with the help of Mr. Desmond Roberts and the PSL club and management we are working towards that and we just hope for the best. When you look at, 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 at your career so far where would you say that you see a lot more work is needed to really get you to that point where you can start looking abroad for that, that pro um, contract? Well definitely racing abroad because Local cycling, we, we are not yet at that standard of racing mm -hmm. as compared to international. So mm -hmm. definitely getting outside and training and racing more would definitely help with that mm -hmm. part of my development. The new venue at Coover, you yeah. see that playing a major part in your career? Of course, of course, because it's one of the best tracks in, in this hemisphere. And mm -hmm. I think it will be a great, once it's used properly, it will be a great mm -hmm. investment and a major part in getting me where I need to be. Mm -hmm. Akil, looking at your uh, career, right? I mean, um, if you have to judge yourself, right? And you said that um, you didn't do too well in some of the, 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 the tournaments that you, you, you took part. Where do you see that Akil has a lot of more work to do still to really rise up to that, uh, that, um, um, that position? I think that you might just to raise this and a little bit, um, staying in Trinidad, really, for me, um, endurance cycling in Trinidad, staying mm -hmm. here wouldn't really take you anywhere. So you are more for endurance cycling yeah. because I realize that most of the long races you were, you know, yeah. Without, yeah. So staying here wouldn't really benefit me as a cyclist. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I never around. So, mm -hmm. so um, always international, always anything outside. It will be better than here to race, so. What is your plans for the balance of the year? Where are you going to be here for the balance of the year when you travel out? What's up? Um, well, I'll be here until after Tobago, um, after the Avenue race. Mm -hmm. um, Nationals for us has been pushed back to November, so I'll probably go to Miami for the duration and keep, come back for Nationals. And um, if they are um, still planning to put it on, um, I'll come back for nationals. If not, I'll be in Miami until probably November, come back home. With the exception of Justin Phillip, who also has a sister who is a cyclist. I think you all are the only other two yeah. brother and sister yeah. combination. <laughs> yeah. Who started first? Me. And uh, who was the mentor, the person responsible for getting you into that sport? My mom. My mom. Yeah. Right. And then you encouraged it, didn't you, right? Well, basically, um, it was... Being younger think. sibling, watching your elder brother mm -hmm. participate in something, and you know, it's just typical sibling stuff that you see one of your siblings doing something, you yeah, want to do yeah, it as well. Yeah. So, yeah. What's the, um, I don't want to say rivalry, but what, what's it like? <laughs> You know, is there, is there a rivalry because I see a laugh? Yeah, no, no, no. Sometimes, yes, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell the truth. When I'm ready, he you knows he just get it on, in training. <laughs> He doesn't let her get it. He doesn't let her get it. I mean, we know we just ease up. Brothers yeah, always ease up yeah, sisters yeah. too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nah, there's no, not really rivalry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sir. But you all, you all feed off of, 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 of each other, right? I would say she feeds off of me. All right, yeah, I, I mean, try you, my best. Yeah, One, yeah. Once I get time, I head across to Miami and we'll train race together, mm -hmm. meet some couple more guys. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Looking back now at um, your involvement in the sport, right? Do, do you see or do you believe that you all were born to be cyclists? Or um, if there's an other sport that you could have easily, you know, swim onto? Um, kind of. Um, I used to run mm. um, school sports, 5K. Um, my, my mom was a runner. She was yeah, in yeah, athletics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Netball, anything. Yeah, I, mean, I, I know your mom from, from netball. I yeah, think she, about. basketball, any, mm -hmm. anything athletic she would do. Um, mm -hmm. I think that we could have um, leaned into something else, but I think that we just want to decide. Do you play any other sports? Well, besides cycling, 
I wouldn't really say so. I mean, I've been introduced to other sports at university. Mm. Um, to say really try, try something new, you know, besides swimming. I, I just love sports. I, well, based on when people see me, they would never think that I am a cyclist. They'll think I'm a volleyballer. Yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Participate in some other sport, but I don't know. I think I'll pretty be good at anything I try once I put my mind to it. So mm. I don't know. Goal setting in this sport. Everybody dreamed to be at the Olympics. Yeah. Right. What's your... Well, definitely the Olympics, Olympics. as well. Yeah. Um, basically, the four major games, Commonwealth, CSC, mm. Pan American Games, and the Olympics. And also, the minor ones to continue placing and meddling in the Caribbean and the other small meets and mm. just trying to achieve more and get the credentials on my name. What's and your major accomplishment so far? Well, my major accomplishment has been in the Caribbean because, as I said, I don't really get to race much international mm -hmm. to really mm -hmm. get that experience. Um, last year, I was the youngest rider to ever medal at the Elite Caribbean. Yeah. I and that, yeah. I won in the time trial event. Mm -hmm. um, previous years, well, as a junior, I believe, I have five, three Car junior Caribbean titles. Mm -hmm. um, I won the double in Dominica Republic and I won gold in the road race in Suriname. Okay. Uh, Kiri, your major accomplishments so far, besides being the top um, local rider and placing to the eight in the, um, in the world, what's your...? Um, for me, I don't really think that I have, have accomplished one yet. Um, I won a couple junior Caribbean tit titles, um, double in Suriname, mm -hmm. um, fought at Panam Juniors, um, nothing really in elite yet for me. I'm still working towards. Um, Is there any one particular cy cyclist that you look to, or let's say pattern or the style you know you you, you, you look at in the world? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Anybody you look up to that you know you try to pattern yourself as a cyclist, or you just no, decide I, to do it on your own? Yeah. Uh, what about you, Anthony? Um, any female that you? Well, yeah, I'm a really big fan of Sarah Hammer, okay. um, who is a track cyclist, mm -hmm. and Mariana Voss, who is a road... Well, she was once a track cyclist and then moved over mm -hmm. to the road. She's from... Um, that's a German writer? Who, Mariana Voss? Yeah. No, she's from the Netherlands. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so, yeah, they are pretty strong riders, and mm -hmm. I admire their grit and perseverance, and they are really two persons that you can really look up to in the sense of racing tactics and how much they are dedicated to the sports. And, yeah. Okay. Clayton, let me, let me say back to you on this Tobago International Classic. Um, how prepared are we at this point in time that everything is going to be okay uh, come Wednesday morning? Well, for one, we have 31 years of doing this thing, and uh, Jeff Charles has a really good team. Mm -hmm. um, and every year we evaluate and uh, try to get it better. We have the the... Well, most of the crew come, come from, from, from Trinidad and we all stay together. Um, as I said, it's 31 years and, uh, mm. for example, this year we, we, we came up with a different strategy of dealing with yeah, the but police. Yeah, but, but in the 31 years, this is the first year you're having some major challenges, eh? So no, we've always had major challenges. As okay. a matter of fact, last year, we had budget cut back as well. Okay. But um, for one... I think the encouragement of ESPN really spurs the organizers because mm. here we do, I mean, you know, a little shaky and they're like, we come in to cover this. Yeah. Um, as Mr. Charles was saying, we've always had budget cut back and, you know, there are a lot of people who, bought, who, have, who have bought into this event. For example, these Canadians who are coming, they are bringing their expertise because they want to be a part of it. The people in the live stream. So there are people who are committed, who and they really make this thing happen. So even with the challenges, people are willing to, uh, you know, adjust, whether it's financially or to make the extra effort to ensure that it comes off. So mm. there's not been a year without challenges and just adjusting and adapting to ensure it comes off. For example, this year there was the whole question of UCI not sanctioning the race. That was in, up for debate and there was discussion and it came off. Um, these Tobago stakeholders, we, how to, how to look at when one area we have a challenge, some other area steps up. Okay. So, for example, the, the, the Tobago support is coming more on board, so that is helping to reduce costs of having to bring up expertise from Trinidad or overseas. And 
we need to work more on getting that involved. But um, the competition is good. And every year, as I said, there are challenges every year. And uh, the organizers are quite happy that despite what's happening off the field with the finances, with the teams that come in, we have a very competitive field this year. So that's encouragement. And uh, you, you have to take the positives and work with it. Otherwise, if you just keep looking at what you don't have and what's not working, you're going to lose the fact that you, you still could do a good race and um, they are competitive at least. They, you know, we try to ensure that they have a wonderful experience. It's not just about the racing, mm. the entertainment. Um, we're always trying to get you know, new things and interesting things for, for them to do while they're here, jet skiing. Um, this one with the sailing, parasailing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we, we try to make it really, really Yes, we have a formula we're working on, but try to add new things to ensure that despite setbacks, it's still a wonderful experience for the cyclists, for the fans, which we're working on, hopefully to have more people come with the teams. But we have to understand what is required for that in terms of packages and all of that for parents or supporters. So it's every year you always see what you can add and improve and adjust and tweak, as the word we use now, to mm. ensure that it's current and interesting and appetizing. Over the 31 years and the 7 years you have been there with them, um, have you seen, and if you have, in what area have you, have you really seen that growth to determine that maybe the next 5 years or the next 3 years, this is going to be one of the major cycling tournaments in the world? Well, for one, you have to be doing something over and over. I mean, you get, you're, Getting it right one, two years is not good enough. You have to keep at, at it so you can have people routine mm -hmm. in terms of knowing what to expect. And as I said, Ms. Jeff Charles, and this year in particular, he's trying to ensure that he delegates a lot more so he can be looking on at what's going on, have a better view. Um, the question he asked me about, what's the word he asked me? In, how, in what areas have you seen growth? Or growth. Um, the media coverage and one, um, the roads, I, I think we have been working better to get the road, the road conditions, getting the, 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 the local persons in the THA to understand the importance of it. Um, we're trying to get, we're getting more support as well. Um, we have been using more technology with the drones, with the Facebook and um, you know, so we, that's something we can do better at. Yes, we recognize that. but. Um, getting the Tobago involvement is critical because what happens is when with the, within the two weeks Tobago gets involved so we under, we trying to appeal more to and liaising more trying to get more people in Tobago to assist in terms of hyping and because Tobago is a little different to Trinidad and there's a little cultural difference you know you can't always come in and impose on Tobago you have to have it generated in Tobago in terms of Tobagonians pushing the idea and the interest to get more to the goodness involved where they see it's our we thing and you get them more involved as a result so of Are that. you saying that this is a, a Tobago thing? To, well, because it's based in Tobago, for example, cost-wise, if you mm. can have persons in Tobago help doing stuff, you won't have to bring them from Trinidad and house them. Okay. Photographers, okay. videographers. Okay. And unless you have them buying into the idea, which is what needs to be improved on because we can't see it as we come in to look, how can we get involved to make this better? How can we learn from it? For example, for me, this is an international cycling event in Tobago. Therefore, I didn't have to travel to go to it. All I needed to show up and see what I can learn. I didn't start off as media layers. I started covering and I, rec you know, working with them. And I said, let's try this, try that. And this is where I am today. But my thing is something in Tobago where we can benefit. Because going to Barbados, as I went a couple of years ago, that you have to buy a ticket, you have to stay. So, um, yes, the roads, but there are a lot of areas we still can improve to get this really international, keep right. it international. We need to take a break. Uh, when we come back, we'll, um, our final segment, we want to talk a bit about um, what can the people expect this year. And also, um, I know that there's only one boat working right now. So, is that a challenge to the Trinidad? Um, supporters and cyclists who will want because there are people who will want to go across right for that for that week so um 
we will talk a bit about that and we will wrap up with uh, Tinil and um, Akil telling us a bit more about their involvement in the sport of cycling. You as you are viewing scoreboard here on ACT and we are talking the Tobago International Cycling Classic which starts on Wednesday and we're going to take a short break when we come back we continue our discussion. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jusane Phillip from Rig Tech Sonics, and I'll be taking part in the Tobago International Cycling Classic. Hi, my name is Joven Gomez and I'll see you for the Tobago Cycling Classic 2017. Welcome back viewers, welcome back to Scoreboard and ACTN. Um, okay, now we'll leave you for last. Let me go across to Tinil because I know that you have some very important information that you would like to share with the public. Yeah, sure. Um, well, as many may know, PSL Cycling Club is the defending championship champions at the Tobago International Classic. Mm -hmm. um, they won most of the majority of the trophies last year, including the Karen event, the sprint event, the CI race, and the top three overall in the four-day classic. Mm -hmm. um, in the four-day classic, they won the yellow jersey from day one and was able to hold it, hold it till the end. Mm -hmm. And also in the UCI stage, um, James Pickley from Canada he did a magnificent job in the UCI race to win the King of the Mountain and then went on to win the UCI race at the end. Mm -hmm. um, however, he would not be coming back this year mm -hmm. because due to his performance, he end up, ended up getting a contract, okay. a pro contract. So, yeah. And However, we still have a strong contingent of cyclists representing PSL Cycling Club. Mm -hmm. This year, we will be having a Caribbean team mm -hmm. as well as an international team. And this will be the first year that there will be a Caribbean team at the at the event. Yeah. So we still look forward to it. Is a it will still be a good show. Two strong teams, and we just like to let everybody know we are coming back to defend our title. You you mentioned something there which is very interesting. You said that um the guy who won will not be here this year because he got a contract. Yeah. Right. Um, it brings me to this question. Do you see a bit of a uh, disappointment that ESPN will not be covering the tournament? Because I think... That it e had a major part in, in it, getting it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it could be as a disappointment because it could open doors for other cyclists who perform well at this Yeah, event. because this will be aired all over the world. Yeah, because so, yeah, it's a yeah. Air, air, well, worldwide sort of stream. So, yeah, it's a bit disappointed. But if they are on board next year, we will see what will happen and if this trend will continue yeah. happening. But at least they, they give commitment that it will be there uh, in 2018. So um, hopefully it will give more opportunities to the Caribbean riders to okay. get a pro contract yeah, yeah. and that will be pretty good for the Caribbean. Also, when the teams are put together, they are local and foreigners on the same team. Yeah, but this year we, we will have a full Caribbean team as... PSL JetBlue. Right. So there will be no... Um, no international riders in that, in that yes, team. Yes, PSL ha is having two elite teams. The PSL team with just international riders and a PSL Caribbean team, which is, mm. goes under the name JetBlue. But, but I guess that... The, 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 but the, other teams mix, though. Other yeah, teams, but I guess yeah. the, the, the locals and the foreigners will, will sometimes come together, right? Do you see that benefiting yeah. you all in any way by way of experience and the knowledge from these cyclists that come from abroad? 
Yes, um, the international writers from PSL always come and they share what they know. We mm -hmm. always sit and listen um, from past years experience when I wrote to them. Um, mm -hmm. So it will be interesting this year to see um, how it plays out. What sort of preparation are you all doing before you get into this, this, this event? Because, I mean, this is a, about four or five days of cycling. It's going to take a lot. Yeah. Um, what are your preparation um, and how is it going right now? Um, preparation wasn't that much um, after, after Elite Panams. You know, Panams was like two weeks yeah. before. So, um, so um, most of your work would have been earlier in the year, probably June. July, August. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, as I say, I, I was abroad training, so I think that I am, um, um, I would say, fit to compete at this um, classic. What would you like to accomplish for this year's event? That yeah, yeah. Man out already. <laughs> no, no, that, that will no, that will make you. You said you wasn't satisfied with some of your performance, but yeah. what? At the end of this event on Sunday, what would you like to accomplish that can make Aki say, you okay, I'm satisfied with what I have achieved here now? Um, I would say winning the under 23 and um, probably the yellow jersey. Okay. Yeah. And Tineel? Well, I mean, I'm going up against guys, although the women will be mixed in Division 2 with mm -hmm. other categories. Mm -hmm. um, Division 2 is still overall is up for grabs for anyone mm -hmm. within the um, cat category since everyone is together. So hopefully I could pull off the jersey on the first day because mm -hmm. I know it will be a challenge to mm -hmm. get, get it on the others. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just want a top five finish at the end of the four day classic. It will be pretty good for me mm -hmm. to give me an idea where I'm at yeah, and I, yeah, yeah. just to take up the opportunity to actually get the racing in mm -hmm. and it will, I know it will be a tough race, and I look forward to it, okay. and yeah. Clinton, there's one boat working to Tobago. Well, yes, how do you see that, or do you see it affecting those who will want to, you know, because a lot of people travel by way of, of the, the ferry because they want to bring their cars. It's, it's about five days of cycling, you know, they don't want to bring, you know, whatever. Well, just earlier this week, we were discussing how we get in the Vega, and normally we book the boat and go up, and some of the, the, the organizing team said, well, we are flying up. Mm -hmm. And it's one boat, and Sunday is a holiday as well as Monday, and mm -hmm. the schedule, for example, is only one it's boat long, sailing. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, it's only yeah. one boat, and putting some of us in a challenge, because there's racing on Sunday, it leaves midday Sunday, it leaves midday Monday. So um, it, it is a challenge, and the boat, obviously, is a holiday time, and... Uh, we're just going to make it happen. I mean, mm -hmm. hopefully the air, the air, traveling by air will mm -hmm. be convenient. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and I remember, for example, last year, even some of the foreign cyclists coming in, they didn't realize that Tobago required that you take an explain. They thought they were just jumping a car and go to Tobago. Mm -hmm. So we had some of them having some mix up in terms of their um, arrivals. But um, We'll see. Hopefully the ferry will cooperate and uh, understand this is an international event and, and um, you know, support us with that. And I just want to, um, as we're talking about Tanila and women, there's one, she's going to have some competition from a Cuban. There's a Cuban rider who's coming in with Team Radar, I think. Yes, yes, Team You have a list of Radar. all the teams? You have yes, I have all the teams. Mm -hmm. um, not, well, 10 teams so far. We have two all-German teams, RC. <laughs> Radelan, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Four riders, all are Germans. Um, Volde Club, Rally Schonder, seven German on the team, and then Embrace the World, six riders, five Germans, one from Switzerland. Raiders, well, I mentioned they have two Trinidad and Tobago athletes, Adam and Joshua Alexander. They have three from Dumrep, hopefully, gonna come. And did the, um, you have yeah, to? Yeah, um, I think they're going to yeah. be here because some, um, some of the guys um, that rode at Elite Panams stayed with the Alexander brothers, right. so I believe okay, that they, so, okay. they're still there. Right. And then you have Cruz, uh, who is a former winner, and Rami Reyes from Colombia. Cruz is from the Dominican Republic, so that Raiders team is also very strong. Mm -hmm. We have, I mentioned, Team PSL, the defending champion, Arno van der Watts, and second place, Nick, Nick, Nick Stoppler, Stoppler, and then Marlo Rodman. So, Good competition. 
Emil Steam is Team Farmaco. He's the only local rider. You have five American riders there and at Guyanese. Mm -hmm. And there's a top US guy there. We're going to see more about him in the tournament. Jet Blue, Jason Phillips is listed to ride. That's the PSL Caribbean team, Jason Phillips. Six local riders. Uh, Varun Maharaj, Akil Campbell, Tyler Cole is the top junior, mm -hmm. Jovian Gonzalez, if I pronounce that properly, Gomez, G Gomez sorry, and Lorenzo <laughs> Orozco, I pronounce that properly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. that's the little guy who Ken. used to, send um, kiss. When, when, when he used to be a max now, when he win, it's a send oh, kiss, yeah. okay, I mean, okay. he used to cry. Okay. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you have Heat Wave, yeah. seven riders, you have Guy Costa mm -hmm. and Enrique de Camaro. The mm, Cameroon, yeah. right? And there are four Barbadian riders on that team, one Guyanese. You have an all St. Vincent and the Grenadines compete every year. They have a team, four from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, one from St. Lucia. And then Econo Rental, e Econo Car Rental, international team. We have an Argentine, three Colombians, one from Denmark, and two from the USA. Um, I mentioned Emil coming back, which is significant because we mentioned he his race started because of Emil, and mm -hmm. he's still here after 31 years. Quite a feat. He's in his well, 40s. Well, well, uh, uh, over 40. Yes, yes. <laughs> Emil and I were. I may be giving away my. Emil and I were in school together. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I want to point out how you, the viewers, can follow the event. We have several platforms: the Facebook Tour of Tobago page. We have the website, trinbagowheelers.com. We have the live stream, and I mentioned the live stream is on Saturday, Friday and Saturdays at the Plymouth Criterion and the Market Square. That's streamevents.tv. All right, at the end of each day, we're going to be putting capsule reports as we did last year of, of the race, you know, a summary, highlighting the major events. Uh, we're going to be doing interviews. We're going to be doing... Um, well, photos, of course. We have an extensive media team. Lots of photos you can follow. And you can just make your way to Tobago. It's, you, all you need is a place to sit. You need a bench. You need an umbrella. You need some, a cooler with drinks. And um, we're really anticipating the competition. Yes, there are areas we need to work on in terms of viewership. But a lot of the view, as you mentioned about the ferry, a lot of the spectators come from, to be, from Trinidad just to follow this event. Mm -hmm. So... We are anticipating a keen competition. We're not going to let the hurricanes keep us back. We're not going to let the financial budgets affect us. Yeah. We are anticipating a keen event. Tour of Tobago is a Facebook page, trinbagowheelers.com, stream events, that TT. And I want to thank the, all the members of the organizing team, the race director, the commissioners. We have some international people coming in for the UCI tour. They come in and ensure that all goes well. Registration ends on Wednesday morning. Uh, I mentioned the beach line. Yes, it's Pigeon Point. We have the mountain bike. I need to remind you of that. The mountain bike, two days. And we have a new venue for that. It's, in, it's now in Mason Hall and Table Piece. Yes, so before we just use Arnoldsville. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, 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 Akil mentioned the, the Tour of Tobago. And within that competition, you mentioned there's a king of the hill points who conquer the hills. There are points for that, and there are points. For Is the this whole event pattern similar to the Tour of France? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Which I, I think the only the only thing that they don't have is a youth, a youth jersey. A youth jersey. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we have yellow jersey. We have top Caribbean riders. We have top under 23. So yeah. So it's. And then there's a fun ride. Unfortunately, this year and last year, we usually have the kids' races. Mm. We have not been able to get that. But they are, the division, if you just want to come and ride, you can come and you see people in all shapes and sizes, but they come and they try and they have a good laugh at it and a good fun. Mm. So that's all. Uh, again, we want to thank our many sponsors, NLCB and the Tobago House of Assembly, really instrumental in, in um, supporting this event. Um, it's five days of action. Because of budgets, again, we cut it back. It is usually six days. We usually start on the Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with the opening ceremony on Wednesday morning and get right into racing on Wednesday afternoon. The NLCB chairman, Mr. Marlon John Celia, he's due to speak. The THA Secretary for Tourism, Transportation and Culture, Nadine Stewart Phillips. Right, I get that right. You know, that's the opening ceremony and um, lots to eat, lots of, lots of parties, a party atmosphere, mm -hmm. the, the cyclists, 
Storbay is right there. You yeah, get up yeah. and you look and you see Storbay, you see the sunset. You know, so it's really a sports tourism effort and um, you know, we're really hoping for a safe with the roads, cooperation with the locals and understanding that the roads are going to be closed off with the police. We really hope that everything works together for the safety of the riders. We have had some serious spills in the past. Thank God that many of them have recovered, but we're trying to minimize that. So I know Mr. Charles and his team have been working on dealing with those, you know, safety and health and ensuring that all goes well and it's a wonderful experience. The, 37, the 31st edition, mm. Tobago Cycling Classic, big event, small island, big event. That's, that's the, the, the mantra, small island, big event. Yeah, but I feel it's time to go by a boat, eh? Um, <laughs> say it louder, say it louder. I'm going to buy all your own boat now, man. I'm going to buy all your own boat now. He likes um, to come to Tobago, by the way. Eh? <laughs> Any yeah. um, closing remarks? Um, look out for PSL Cycling Club at the Tobago International Classic. We are the defending champions, champions and we are looking to keep it, keep our title. Okay. She just said it. Yeah. <laughs> and the first year you're riding with the club, right? No, second year. Second year, right. right, right. But but this, right. Is also, um, this is also our local team, so we, we ride for PSL okay. in Trinidad. Right. Clayton, any one minute. Come and support the Tobago International Cycle Classic. The best of the world is coming to our shores, whether it's Trinidad, Tobago, one country. Come, it's right here. Come and support. Even the people in Tobago, you need to come out and support this event from all over the world, Argentina, Germany, Denmark, USA, and our Caribbean and, and local riders. Quality racing, we need to come and support this event. One, one final thing. What has been the crowd support over the years? Well, that is something we, we felt it could be better, but in Plymouth in particular, because it's in the village mm -hmm. and people could actually stay in their gallery. Some of them build special patios, mm -hmm. you know, but we need to work on that, especially from a Tobago point of view, getting the schools involved, because given the time of the day, could, there are schools, we had talked before about getting erecting stands, especially with the Tour of Tobago. And that is where the Tobago end that need to work, work. We need to work on that of getting Tobago committee. We, we talked about it last year, so hopefully maybe for next year where we have, because we, we need Tobagonians to get Tobagonians involved and supporting more events. We need, yes, we need a big sponsor, but you might get some of the local sponsors, mm -hmm. which would mean that people could identify with, with, with supporting local event and whether well, there's some coolers, whether well, there's some bleachers and it's something we need to work on okay. as we see in Tour de France, you know, okay. so. Well, viewers, we have come to the end of an edition of Scoreboard here on ACTN. We were talking to Clayton Clark, Aki Campbell, and Tinil Campbell. And we were discussing the 2017 edition of the Tobago International Cycling Classic, which starts on Wednesday and ends on October the 1st. Um, it's going to be interesting. A lot of top international riders uh, from different countries will be here. So if you can get uh, to Tobago over the next couple of days, it's going to be interesting. So... Remember, viewers, if you miss any part of this program, there's a repeat tomorrow at 1 p.m. So I hope that you can tune in. Remember, Scoreboard is on every Tuesday between the hours of 8 and 9. We have come to, this, to the end of this edition, and we wish you a pleasant week ahead. And we look forward to you joining us next week, Tuesday at 8 p.m.